Hello and welcome to a refreshed, revamped series using Unreal Engine 5 in AI. In this series, we'll be covering everything to do with AI in the AI systems in Unreal Engine. In this first episode, we're going to start off with the basics as setting up an AI character, including how to do their animation using the current new UE5 mannequins. So, let's get started. So, we're going to start off by creating our character class. Now in our characters folder, which is part of the third person template, we can go in here and we'll create another folder for our AI. And in here we're going to create a new blueprint class and choose a new character class. This is going to be our NPC class. So BP NPC. Now alongside that. We also need to add in the AI controller. So go into the blueprint class again, search for all classes, and we're going to search for the AI controller. The AI controller is what is going to be controlling our AI character around the level. So we have this, and we're going to call it AI or NPC. Uh, next thing we're going to do is we're going to go into our BP NPC and open up our character and set it up to use the many mannequin mesh component on the right hand side we're going to choose animation uh sorry, sorry skeletal mesh here and choose the skm many bring that down into the capsule and turn it around face the right way now this mannequin does come with a animation blueprint which you can find here here app many however there's an issue with this one in that this animation blueprint does use something that requires a player input so if you try to get make anything like ai use it it won't work so we have to edit our app many to make it work for our player character and via ai i'm going to click on my browse icon to get to the app many blueprint here and this only applies if you're using this mannequin's uh, animation blueprint if you're using your own one totally up to you you can achieve that so the culprit for that you'll find in here is down in this section here. Update animation in then one is this get current acceleration. Now, as you can see from the tooltip, this requires input from the uh, movement component, but a player input. In other words. Now we don't necessarily have player input because this could be for AI as well. So there's a way around this. We can either skip this entirely and just make this work, it should move, or if we also want to take that into account as well, is we want to uh, do a check to see if the pawn is player controlled. So let's move that down a little bit here. Right click and do try get pawn owner. And there we're going to do this player controlled. And if it is player controlled, we'll use in this branch here. So when it should move, we're going to take this down and do select, select, so, and the index is going to be our is player controlled. If it's true, we're going to be using the stuff that was here previously. If it's false, we're only going to be using the ground speed. False will go to there. And that will fix that for us to work for both the player and for AI. So I'm going to go back to my NPC, I, I, um, NPC blueprint and you should see it should look just fine. Now, if you go to the class defaults, you're going to see section for AI controller. In here, you've got two options to need a tweak and change. You've got AI controller class. So this is the by default set to the uh, the default AI controller class that's been given in uh, Unreal. We're going to change this to our custom one we made, AI NPC. Then the other option you may want to change is this auto process AI. Depending on what your setup is, you may require your AI to be placed in the wild and be and be possessed straight away. Maybe you want them to be possessed only when they've been spawned into the world, or both maybe, or disabled entirely as well. So there's a few options you can do there. We'll keep it as placed in the world for now, but just so you know, that's a thing. Okay, we're done here. We're going to compile and save this, and we're going to close that. The other thing we're going to need in our map is a navigational mesh. Now, nav meshes are found in your add option menu. You go down to volumes and it's right at the top, nav mesh bound volume. I've already added it to the level and stretch it across the whole entire level. And just preview it, you hit the P key 
you'll see that green nav mesh indicating where the NPC could go. The dark green outlines are borders, meaning that it cannot cross the border unless connected by a nav link uh, proxy or by another navigational mesh. As a reminder, toggle that off and on with the P key. Okay, so now we've got our AI character itself. We're going to drag it into the scene. Uh, but now we need to give it some behavior to run around. Now we're going to do something very basic. We're going to make him just follow the player character. So I'm going to go to my content drawer, open up the character here, and on begin play, we're going to do AI move to and do AI move to. This requires a pawn reference, otherwise itself. And the target actor we're going to give it is the get player character. That is it. File save. And I'll push play now. And now you can see he's going to run after me. So a few other things we want to do with our AI is we want to make sure they can turn properly. When you first create a character, you will find the turning looks a bit weird. It looks very like very uh, abrupt, very strange. So what we're going to do is we're going to fix that. We just go open up our MP NPC and you go to class defaults. And on the right hand side, you'll see an option saying "Use Controller Rotation Your." You want to turn this off. You mostly only want this on when you're doing first person controls, as you want the control rotation to be uh, manipulated by the character movement component. So speaking of which, click on your catch movement component and then scroll down on the right hand side until you find the rotation settings. They are. And we're going to tick use controller desired rotation. Whilst I'm here, I'm also going to tell it to go a bit slower. So you'll find max walk speed, turn it down to like 350. So back on those rotation settings, you will find there's two tick boxes use controller desired rotation and orient rotation to movement. Uh, these basically mean that the controller desired rotation is the controller wants it to go in a particular way Therefore it will turn the whole character model around to match that direction Whereas character movement or in rotation of movement means if the character is moving a certain direction It will look in the direction that it's currently moving in so your camera could be facing one way for example And your character could be running another But for this for AI we want it to use controller desired rotation the rotation rate just means it can turn 360 degrees in one second. So if you want to turn slower, make it lower. If you want to turn quicker, make it higher. Okay, so now if I push play, you can see him now coming after us. And that brings us to the end of part one. Now that we've got a basic character set up, we're going to start looking at the behavior tree system. So in the next episode, we're going to go through the behavior tree, explaining the different functions it has and how we can use it to move the character around the space. You can watch that next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley, as well as many other videos too, from just $1 a month. Massive thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for their continued support. Please make sure you subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, everyone.